Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 17th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And I don't want anyone to miss this, so I'm going to say it right at the beginning. Taking a look at the Hawk Count Report today from the Presque Isle Hawk Watch in Erie, Pennsylvania. They had around 8,700 broad-winged hawks, including 7,300 in the first 30 minutes, and it's likely that they missed a significant number before that. So it is very likely that sometime in the next few days, we are going to get a huge broadwing flight at the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Fingers crossed. Stay tuned till the end of this video, and I'll give a full analysis of the weather over the next few days and hopefully give some insights on which days might be the best. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit, and you can see that the sand bridge between the spit and the barrier island is completely underwater now. And that was likely just today because of the northeasterly winds uh, bringing a lot of waves towards the bay. So I bet over the next few days that you'll be able to walk across the sand again. But you'll probably still need muck boots if you actually want to get onto the barrier island. Here's a group of Caspian terns standing on the sand bridge. So you can see it's not deep water. It's just water flowing across the sand. We spent most of the time out near the tip of the East Spit, and we could see some oncoming rain that did pass through, but the main highlight of the morning was just watching a large number of swallows fly around uh, really close, and we had a good variety of species. So every morning when you go out, you never know what the unusual thing of the day is going to be, but today was all about the swallows. We'll start off with this unusual guy. Here we see a swallow with a very white forehead. And taking a look at the top side, we see that it's a bluish color and that the bird is white underneath. So this is just a tree swallow that has a pigment abnormality, giving him a white forehead. Normally the forehead would be the same blue color as the rest of the upper side. Here we have a swallow that is completely brown on top and a completely brown head as well. And we see that the upper breast also has some dirty brown coloration to it. This is a northern rough-winged swallow. Here we have another swallow that's brown on top, but this one was quite small and we see that it has a white throat and some white that goes up the side of the neck as well. And the underside overall is white, but there is a brown breast band that goes across. This is our smallest swallow, the bank swallow. Here's another swallow that looked brown on top, especially in the poor light this morning, but we see that on the underside it's completely white. We don't have that dirty brown to the upper breast we also do not see a brown breast band. We do see a little bit of a blue sheen, which gives us a hint that this is actually just a tree swallow. And based on the time of the year, I would say that this is not a juvenile, but rather just a really drab female. Here we have a swallow that's blue on top with a red forehead and throat, and we see a long forked tail. And in fact, it's our only swallow that ever shows a long forked tail like this. This is a barn swallow. Here's another swallow that I had a decent look at in the scope, but got very poor photos of. Probably the most obvious thing in the photo is that there's an orange rump area. Other field marks for this species include a white forehead, blue on top, a reddish face with a dark throat. This is a cliff swallow, and it's a little bit early, so I knew it would get flagged on eBird, so I did my best to get some documentation. The cliff swallow looks very similar to a much rarer species that we sometimes see in this area called the cave swallow. And we had a cave swallow at the East Spit back on April 12th of 2020. You'll see that cave swallows also have an orange rump, but their face is a bit more of a pale orange, both the face and the throat. And instead of having a white forehead, they have more of an orange or red forehead. And the other swallow species that we see in this area, but we did not see today, is the largest of all, which is the purple martin. And here's a male purple martin that I photographed last spring at the Hawkwatch. All right, moving on from that quick review of swallows, let's move on to some galls. Here we have two small galls that have very pointed wings. You see this one on the right is coming into breeding plumage, getting a very black head. We see a small black bill. We see just a line of black here on the wing just the very tips of the feathers are black on the left we have one that is in first winter plumage these are bonaparte's galls we saw all the swallows suddenly panic and saw this small raptor chasing them and then it perched in the tree where we could watch it for a few minutes here we have a small falcon with a lot of dark streaking underneath we see a dark tail with some white bands on it this is a Merlin, and it sat there nicely for us, and I put my scope on it and zoomed all the way in and just had a tremendous look at it. So great bird on a day with not too many other raptors for us. 
Here's a photo, which is a nice size comparison of a few ducks. On the right, we have a male mallard, and it looks really stretched out in this photo. It's kind of like the limousine of ducks. In the middle, we have a male American widgeon, and on the left, we have the female American widgeon. Here we have a young ring-billed gull looking kind of handsome as he transitions from first winter plumage into first summer plumage. Here we have a small bird climbing up a tree. We see a very thin, slightly decurved bill. We see a long tail that it can use to brace itself as it climbs up. We see white undersides, but a very camouflaged backside. You can imagine that if this bird turned and was against the bark and all we could see was that back, that it would practically disappear. This is a brown creeper. Here we have a very small songbird that was constantly moving and wouldn't come out for a nice photo, but we can see a white wing bar and some yellow to the wings. Do you know what this is? I'll give you a hint, it had a white eye ring and some ruby on its crown. This is a ruby crowned kinglet. At the East Spit, we had a total of 45 species and did anyone else notice that eBird went through a redesign? Pretty snazzy. Next, we made our way over to the Hawk Watch, but by then the rain was starting, so there was no count conducted today, although I did hang out for a while. Here we have a small falcon that was hover hunting over the marsh, meaning it was facing into the wind and flapping, but staying completely stationary as it looked down below it to see if there was any prey it wanted to grab. It's an American kestrel. And I went out on the boardwalk where this sparrow popped up singing a nice trilling song. We see a lot of red and rufous highlights to the cap and the back and wings. This is a swamp sparrow. From the Hawk Watch, we had 43 species today. After a midday break for lunch, Kim and I went back out in the afternoon as the rain was ending to Ontario Beach Park and the Charlotte Pier. It was a bit treacherous up on the pier with strong northeast winds and waves splashing up onto the path. We were rewarded with some nice looks at long-tailed ducks, including this one coming into its darker breeding plumage. And here's another long-tailed duck in the more standard plumage that we see them in over the winter. Here's another group of long-tailed ducks, and of special note is this one at the top right, where we have the long tail that indicates an adult male coming into that darker breeding plumage that we so seldom see. We also had some flocks of double-crested cormorants. And this male red-breasted merganser gave us a close flyby. At the Charlotte Pier, we had 14 species, including a lesser black-backed gull, so quality over quantity. I picked up two new species for the season today, which were Cliff Swallow and Field Sparrow, both at the East Spit. Taking a look at the hawk count report, again, the count was not conducted today. So the April total remains 15,699, and the season total 23,819. Okay, as I said at the beginning of the video, the Presque Isle Hawk Watch in Erie, Pennsylvania had a huge push of broad-winged hawks today, so let's just dig into it a little bit and see if we can come up with a good forecast for us for the next few days. And I'm not going to pretend that I can read everything on this weather map, but this is the current map as of the time of filming, Wednesday night. We see a warm front here down near Erie, Pennsylvania. So I think what happened was that Presque Isle got a big push of Broadwings ahead of that warm front. Now it seems like the Hamburg Hawk Watch, which is near Buffalo, New York, had a very small day today, only a few raptors. And so I think that there was rain stretching all the way from Buffalo over to us in the Rochester area. And also we had unfavorable winds in the Rochester area. As you go farther east over towards Oswego, where the Derby Hill Hawk Watch is, they did not have rain early today, so they ended up with a pretty good flight of broad wings. Taking a look at windy.com, this is looking at today around noon when Presque Isle was getting that big push of broad winged hawks. We see that they had favorable south-southeast winds that would have been concentrating all of those hawks up to the shorelines of Lake Erie. So we have, let's say, 10,000 or more broadwings probably in this area here. We have Hamburg Hawk Watch, which is up here towards Buffalo. Got very few raptors today. So even though there were some southerly winds, I think there was a lot of rain stretching across this whole area of western New York that would have shut down the flight. And then for us up here in the Rochester area... You can see we had east-northeast winds coming off the lake, along with a lot of rain throughout the day, so we did not have any hawk flight today. The count was not conducted. And then as you go farther over towards Oswego, 
you can see that they had a light easterly wind, which for them is good for concentrating the raptors against the shoreline. So they ended up with a decent flight of broadwings because they did not have the rain like we did. Taking a look ahead to tomorrow morning, this is 11 a.m. on Thursday the 18th. You see up here in the Rochester area, we have west-southwest winds. Those are good winds for us to concentrate any broadwings. Again, all of the broadwings were concentrated down in this area today. And there's probably also other ones in between that got shut down from the rain today. Uh, these are favorable winds to bring them up towards the lake shore and past us at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And you can see over in Oswego, strong southeast winds. Wouldn't be surprised if Derby Hill gets another big flight tomorrow. And then looking ahead to Friday the 19th at noon, we just see strong southerly winds throughout the whole region. And if I just go a few hours ahead, let's go to 2 p.m. You can see we have very strong southwest winds for the Braddock Bay area. That's a really good wind for us. Now they are calling for Friday to be a little bit uh, gloomy with some chance of showers, but... If the winds are like this, I think the hawks are going to push through regardless. And looking all the way over towards Derby Hill over in Oswego, again, a good southerly wind. So if that huge mass of broadwings that went through Erie yesterday is traveling tomorrow and then could possibly reach us on Friday. As of right now, I'm thinking that Friday could be the big day. Now, if Friday ends up being a bit gloomy, uh, if we look ahead to Saturday, here's Saturday at 11 a.m., it's supposed to be uh, better weather on Saturday, not any rain. I think we're supposed to have sunshine. And you can see we have a west or a west-northwest wind. So it's not as favorable as those southerly winds, but it's still a good wind to keep hawks migrating over the platform. And then looking ahead to Sunday, again, strong westerly winds over the Braddock Bay area. Maybe a little stronger than we want, but the point is over the next four days, it looks like we're going to have winds that are going to keep us at the platform and there shouldn't be that many broadwings sneaking around south of us like we had yesterday where we have light southerly winds and then a lake breeze kicks in you can have a lot of broadwings that don't quite make it up to the lake shore and they end up going south of us maybe over the city of rochester and you end up missing a bunch of broadwings but the way the winds are looking the next couple days it seems like the broadwings should be coming over braddock bay park which day it's going to happen it's not completely clear yet and i would imagine that um, most of those days should be pretty good, but I think a lot of it hinges on how gloomy it ends up being on Friday. If it ends up not being as gloomy as they're calling for, I think we could have a pretty big day, but even tomorrow I think could be pretty good as well. All right, well, I know that might be overly detailed, but I know that there's certain people who are probably considering calling in sick to work, avian flu, right? So I want to make sure everyone has the information that they need. Let me now just read you the uh, forecast that I wrote before I learned that Prescott had had such a huge day today. For tomorrow, it's looking overcast, although they keep adding a little bit more sun in every time I look, with a high in the upper 50s and winds west-southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now, the Windy app seems to disagree with this. The, it has the wind shifting around more to light, northwest, or northerly winds in the middle of the day but we'll hope that it stays this west-southwest at 10 to 15 because that's a much better wind. And I think tomorrow it'll partly depend on how much it clears up. It looks like that rain's moving out. They took most of the rain out of the forecast, maybe some sunshine for the morning. We had a big broadwing flight yesterday, so it seems like there should be broadwings in the region that are in position to be brought up to the lake shore and go over the hawk watch. Obviously today, a lot of the birds between us and back to buffalo weren't able to move at all because of the rainy conditions and there's that huge mass of broadwings somewhere uh, somewhere between erie pennsylvania and buffalo new york as we speak so i don't know if they'll make it to us tomorrow but it could still end up being a pretty good day friday is really the day that i'm keeping an eye on they're calling for considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers a high in the low 60s and winds south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Really, I think it's more of a southeast wind switching around to a southwest, but either way, it's a good southerly wind. It's partly going to depend on how gloomy it ends up being. Um, how thick is the cloud cover and how many rain showers are we getting? And even if it is quite gloomy with the winds that strong at 10 to 20, I think if that mass of broadwings is ready to go, we could still get a significant number of 
Broadwings pushing through on Friday. So don't roll it out yet. I would definitely keep an eye on Friday. And if they take some of that rain out, and God forbid they add a little bit of sunshine, that could be the day. And then into the weekend for Saturday, they're calling for partly cloudy skies with a high of 51. Winds west at 15 to 25. So maybe that's a little bit stronger than we normally want for those good conditions to form big kettles. But again, if those broad wings are ready to move, I think they're going to push through regardless. A westerly wind is a decent wind for us. It's not as favorable as a southwest, but it's still a good wind that'll keep us at the platform. And again, we won't have all those broad wings going around us uh, to the south. So uh, at some point, I think in the next three or four days, we are going to get a lot of broad wings passing through. Uh, Sunday, again, is looking kind of similar to Saturday with some sunshine and strong westerly winds again. So again, it's not obvious which day is going to be the good one, but it looks like we're going to have decent weather for the next four days that any of them we could really end up with a good number of broad winged hawks. All right, are you excited? I know I'm excited. I think there's a lot of broad wings going to be passing through in the next few days. My money's on Friday, but it's one of those days that it could end up being a really, really, really good day or a complete bust with those rainy conditions. So we'll have to see how it unfolds over the next few days, but definitely consider coming out to visit the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch as we enter the peak of the adult broad-winged hawk migration. If you like this video, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily updates. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.